the great philosopher Teddy Pendergrass said, wake up everybody. <laughs> you've, got, you've, got to, you've got to examine what is going into what is showing up in your life. It's not happening by chance. Are you with me? We have to be willing to walk in purpose and move away from this addiction to suffering. We have to be willing, I'm going to say that again, we have to be willing to walk in purpose and move away from this addiction to suffering. It's, it's almost as if we, we are not happy unless we are suffering. And, and human beings, stay with me, human beings are uniquely uh, fashioned it seems to be one of the few creations that holds on to certain things, right? If a deer shows up in my yard, don't now, I said this at, at church, and don't say it outside of here, but if, and I don't have a rifle, I don't think, but if I take a rifle in my commonwealth and shoot at the deer that's in my yard, it might run that day, but it's coming back when it's hungry. Are you with me? But people, we hold on to the very thing that will keep us from having what we want. Now, I want the deer to stop eating my landscaping, but it's teaching me a lesson. Don't be afraid to go and eat what you're hungry for. Are you with me? So it's almost as if we have uh, this, this, this in, 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 uh, insatiable desire to hold on to the fear that is keeping us from walking in our purpose. When they want to train a, ba a baby elephant, they take a small rope and they tether the baby elephant to a pole. And what the baby elephant will do is it will learn, it will become conditioned, it will learn, it will become conditioned, it will learn, it will become conditioned to believe that it is not supposed to move from that which it is tied to. Now you know as I do that there is no way in the world that a small rope can keep tethered to a pole a, a five-ton colossus that is a grown elephant. But as Les said last night, if you can condition the mind, you don't have to worry about the behavior. And what I'm telling you is that if you find your purpose, it will shift you up out of your conditioning. Are you with me? So you've got to be willing to walk in your purpose. Say, I'm walking in my purpose. The next thing I need you to do, next thing I need you to do, as you say yes to coming out of what would keep you limited, as you say yes to being the master of yourself, next thing I need you to do is, is be willing to forgive. Say, I'm willing to forgive. I'm willing to forgive. Forgiveness is a primary. It's key. It's critical if you are going to have the faculties that are at your disposal serve you. We absolutely must be willing to forgive. Not only must we be willing, we must do that which we are willing to do. Are you with me? We have to go ahead and evict the folk who are living in our mental space, in our emotional space. We got to be willing to forgive them and let them go so that they can stop living rent-free in our space. But you got to be willing to forgive. What freedom, what uh, forgiveness does is it gives us the kind of freedom that lets us shed our baggage. Keep walking with me. Dr. Elaine said that forgiveness is the accomplishment of mastery over the wound. She said, it's the process through which an injured person first fights off, then embraces, then conquers the situations that would have destroyed them. See, what you've got to remember is that forgiveness is not a gift to the person who did you wrong. You've got to remember that forgiveness is the gift that you give to yourself because as Reverend Coleman would say, there's nobody worth you sitting in the hospital sick while they out having a good time about the stuff they did to you. You got to be willing to forgive it. And I want to invite you to start with yourself. You got to know how to forgive yourself for having fallen and having failed. See, I'm someone who was incubated in love. What I mean by that is when my mother was pregnant with me, she had a choice to make. My grandmother said to her, either you can keep that baby and go or you can give the baby away and stay. So my mother was forced to make a decision that required her to express love. So I was baked in love. 
it's all in me. So when I see you and you see me and we just get our thing on, it's not fake, it's who I am. I was incubated in love. But I betrayed that love when I became a drug dealer. I betrayed that love when I became a gangbanger. I betrayed that love and my sense of betrayal of the love and the genocide to the people who looked like me placed a, a pound or a ton of guilt on me that I walked with for years. And so when I talk to you about forgiving yourself, I'm not talking to you about the theory of forgiveness. I'm talking to you about the practice of forgiveness, and I hope it just so happens that I'm talking to practical metaphysicians. And so what does it mean to be willing to forgive yourself for the missteps and the mistakes that you made? What does it mean to forgive a mate who couldn't keep their promise? What does it mean to forgive a friend who betrayed you and talked about you and turned their back on you? What does it mean to forgive? And why is it so important for the master? See, forgiveness doesn't come because someone asked for it. Nor does forgiveness come because someone earned it. Forgiveness comes when you, as the forgiver, understands the power of grace. See, there is an unmerited favor that you didn't earn, but you got. There is an unmerited favor that you didn't have to ask for, but it was given to you. And as one in love, you know that whatever you get, you have to give. Is that right? And so you've got to be willing to forgive if you will walk as a master. The purpose of forgiveness, put this in your notes, is not to make you holy. It's not to make you feel more divine. It's not to humiliate you. But the purpose of forgiveness is to empower you above and beyond the experience. Reverend Alberta said it to it this way, I am more than a conqueror. See, if you can forgive what you thought was intended to take you out, you can walk in a power that you didn't have before. See, I like, I like these words from the Apostle Paul. I like these words from the Apostle Paul. He said, when reviled, we blessed. When persecuted, we endure. And when slandered, we speak kindly. See, if you can forgive to the place where when people are coming at you, you're loving on them, what you're doing is you're living out of your consciousness and not reacting to theirs. I'm trying to help you be a master right now. 